Hello, uh, today I will be breaking down differential evolution. So, first we should understand what it is. It is an evolutionary algorithm, which means it's based on biology over calculus. If, what these try to do is they, um, over iterations, they will tweak uh, your solutions and then they will see is this a better, does this give me a better score than my original answer? And if it's a yes, then that's considered to be a good uh, generation otherwise it's not and that way the hope is that what you end up with is the perfect species per se so it's it's an optimization function so this is done for either finding the uh, reducing your error or finding the configuration with the best score etc this can be used with non-differentiable functions this is super important and i will be getting more into this uh, in the next slides and lastly, it's very, very cool. And this is what this is very overlooked just because it's based on a completely different paradigm. So I will be elaborating on these things further. So let's understand how this works. As it's a fundamentally it's a very simple algorithm. So what we see here is you first start off with an initial population of solutions. So that that could just be okay, one configuration. Uh, this is something that sort of works and then we decide okay how do we create new ones we just say let's add something to these solutions like or let's add two uh, solutions from the same set together etc and if you get a score if you get the very good score then you keep it otherwise you don't keep it so in this image uh, wh what you see mutation and recombination that's basically the second step mentioned in the text where you're creating new solutions you select a solution if it's better than your baseline score and uh, if you reach a termination conditions which means you've either run out of time or you have reached the best possible solution then you just term terminate and take the best one so now why i'm going to break down why it's very useful and the first thing is range so as you if you remember i'd mentioned differentiable functions in my last in the last uh, slides to, in, towards the introduction so this is an example of a function that's not differentiable so what we see is it is it goes from here and there's it's disconnected here it has sudden bends or it has uh it there are some other conditions but basically differentiable functions all the optimization like gradient descent all of these are based on the fact that a function has a gradient or a slope so if you see in this we see a we see the function rising up then down then up and down again so these that's the slope of the function so we'd see a positive slope then a negative slope and out here we see the minimum so there are, this doesn't assume that a function has a gradient and that's very useful when we're dealing with real world problems because they're often not continuous which is one of the big uh, which is one of the key conditions to be differentiable sorry and so which is why it can be applied to real world problems and i will be breaking down uh, showing you one later and last thing along the similar lines it's very data apathetic so you don't have to be too worried about am i using the right machine learning model am i using the right optimization protocol because it's very simple and and this with simplicity does is it lets you apply it to a large class of solutions the second thing is it's very cost effective so again you you you'd remember from last time but it it takes almost nothing it does almost nothing it just does some very basic mathematical operations on existing solutions so that's very simple it is very reliable and so i i'm just going to give you a direct example of this so this is something called a one pixel attack where you try to fail full deep learning models by changing one pixel in an image so you can't you probably can't even see what they've changed but uh, the research has changed one pixel in a cup and the assumed that uh soup bowl etc etc so the reason all of these work uh, so the reason why i found this extremely interesting and why i wanted to make this video is precisely because of this it's so cheap to run and it can really fool your models 
and on a related note this can be applied to a very large class with very few modifications so this this was this is specifically applied to a deep learning network which classifies images you could to pick up almost the identical protocol, change very little and apply it to something like cancer detection and it would work equally well just because of how it's based. It's based almost completely on uh, take solutions, add or subtract, um, merge two together, see if you get a better solution, so forth. And lastly, the best, uh, one of the very overlooked things, it's very simple. So if you're, if you want to track the solution to see exactly what's going on as it happens it works very well and this is one of the big critiques of complex deep learning models that they're just not visible they're a black box thing where you input something and you get something out and you don't know how exactly it got to that and uh, even even when it can be applied uh, you know even though it, you can apply differential evolution to functions with uh, to various um, diverse problems while not changing much. You can also modify the, the algorithms really easily to give it uh, to make it work for a large class of functions. And lastly, uh, as mentioned, when you when you add it to a problem, it's very cheap. So you can add it and you will get a since it's not gradient based, it might give you results that differ from your normal optimization. And if it does, then that means you would probably want to look more into the data and not just proceed on. And on the flip side, it can really confirm your hypothesis or confirm your findings if your gradient based and your evolution based algorithms agree. And that is it for this video. If you do like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. Um, share this, leave any feedback you might have. Uh, I will be linking a Medium article down below that goes a lot more into detail on this. and. Um, mentions other implementations of differential evolution if you're in if this is something that intrigues you i would say suggest that you check it out um, that's about it thank you